Hello everybody and welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be doing a different type of point and click game. Now I know previously on my channel I'll put it in the little icon above if I remember I had done a hidden objects type game and that one is more stressed like you're on a timer you're trying to find all these things and this is more point and click style which is a lot more chill. <laughs> Typically I have seen some point and click horror games though and those things get creepy. Uh, but yeah, let me run you through it. You need to break the chain to open the trap door. There must be something useful around to help. Okay. So, gee, I wonder what I'm supposed to click. This is a very, very clean, very bare-bones version to show you how the mechanics work. This is not, obviously, how it would look artistically. Like, each of the events would be NPC characters. Uh, they would be preferably uh, graphics that you hide around a much more detailed map. But to start, boop -de boop I found the item. You can't see it very well because it's a little white background. Oops, that's on me. But a little glow thing plays. And it appears up here, which you cannot interact with. It doesn't do anything. It just shows you have it. Which, uh, using HUD Maker or something like, you could add a little HUD up here to show the items you have. And you could even, because I'll show you later, have it set that these become interactable so you can move them. Uh, you might want to have it set, though, so that the only one that is actually uh, interactable is the final object. You might even have it set so that it's only the final object once everything's put together that pops up here. Um, but yeah. So bada boop, bada boop, and bada boop, bada boop. Great. Now if I put this all together, ta-da, a fully functioning tool. Hopefully. Now to use it on the door. And... See, this is what gets tricky about using the mouse icon. It's normally it's the edge of the mouse that'll click things, right? But because it's a character, you just use the entire mouse to click. And use bolt cutters on chain. Yes. Aw, they broke. I guess there's only one place left to go. And then you have this to go on to the next area. But yeah, that's it for everything it does. Alright. So I did this actually uh, accidentally when I was drawing it, but I had the chain perfectly set in a tile, which when you are... <coughs> Goodness, I'm sorry. When you're drawing the room, you want to make sure all the interactables are set in... Excuse me one second, I am so, so sorry. Oh man, that was like the chest hurting cough. Alright. I'm not getting sick again, I'm not getting sick again. Anyways. But yeah, this is only happens if the party has the bolt cutters, which they get. Bada boop, bada boom, and then yeah, it does everything and changes the background. It is a parallax map with the exclamation point to tell it to stay in place, which doesn't really matter because I'm using the map is the same size as the screen, so no matter where the player moves, the map will not move. But if you're using a bigger map, the exclamation point helps stay it in place. Um, but yeah, there's that, and then it changes to that, and I just have it set in here with it not looping, obviously. That would be a pretty cool effect, honestly. But, um, yeah. And it does this. Uh, your thing's broke. You need to... Remove the bolt cutters. Oh wait, I already did that. Silly me, I know what's up. And then, yeah. That's the end of it. Uh, these are set to only appear once the switch is been turned on. Which is this one. Uh, it'll turn, like, this is the handle of the bolt cutters. There's handles, bolts, and blades. This is the handle, and it shows the radiation of it. And then this tests. If all the events is on, then it turns done on, which is what starts this event. Um, same thing with everyone, just with a different switch. 
And then once that's all on, this event starts, because it's done. Then it turns all of those events off, which makes them disappear from here. And yeah, that's pretty much it for a short little point and click thing. Um, I know it's very bare bones and a more than a little ugly, but the basics are there and I feel like that's what's important for this. So, yeah. Hello everybody, and I decided I originally was going to do this in another video, but then I looked at the length of the video and realized it was, um, like, five minutes. And so I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, since this is a continuation, I'm just gonna tack this on to the end of that video. So I made some different ways to do the point and click game. So let's dive into this. All right. And look, I made little icons this time, so it's not just random NPCs. But anyways, item one. Item two. And item three. Wait, now if I put this all together, ta-da, fully functioning tool. Tool, hopefully. I'd find how to use it. Now, still, even if you go up. Oh. Okay, I'll fix that in a second, but show you how it works. Get the tools, go up here, you use it, it opens, and then you return the item to the sidebar. And yeah. So first, let me, um, this needs to be if actor item is in front of you. Okay. Yes, okay, I did it. And then, so let's break this one down and then I'll go and do the other one. So for this one, you see you got the items, it works a lot like them, when you get them here and then combine, and this is when the event starts to differ. Here I have an additional switch turning on, which is bolt item on, and that causes this item to appear, which is the bolt. And then I, as soon as you click it, I turn the followers off, I change the party member, I add item, and then this bit of code is just uh, swapping, it's game party, accessing the party, I'm swapping the order of the party, and putting the actor in position four, which is the pointer finger in the actor in position five, and I'm swapping their order, so I'm changing the person who was in first, the person behind them, and so the Bolt cutters show up as the uh, number one line. Then I change this one to disable, and then the event goes to this. When you click it, it removes the item, turns off this, and goes back to this, and it just infinitely loops. All right, now what this is supposed to do is if item is in the party, then use bolt cutters. Otherwise, it'll say you're missing a key item. Or, you know what? Let's actually add to this to make it more obvious uh, if you've gotten it. A full item is on. Let's put this here. Then let's change this to the item. I cannot spell. Is not equipped. That way it lets the player know they have the right item. It's just not equipped yet. Perfect. All right, and then let's run through that one more time to show you it working properly. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. Boom, boom. Fine. My trackpad is not happy with me today. <laughs> bada boom, bada boom. Oh, before I did that, I wanted to show you. I'm missing a key item. All right. Great, put it together, get a bolt cutter, you need to use it. Now, if I go down here, it'll be like, the item is not equipped. And then you go and get the item. These bolt cutters. Yay. And then, yeah, you would want to have an addition. If you like had to click to go through this, you'd want to have an additional one to make sure that the pointer is 
head of the party, and then have them go through. But yeah, that's one edition of it. Then let's go on to the other one. This removes an extra step. And instead of having all of your items stored on the side, it instead will store them in the menu. Now, it depends on how many items you want to have in your game and all that, how you're going to want to do this. And eventually, too, if you got too many items, you could have it set. So you could change what items you have set here. But you might need a plugin to expand the number of events pages you can have. But yep, let's just do this one. Yep. See, here you have access to the menu to switch between items. So if I were to go in the menu, change the formation between you and you. And look, the arrow is the item again. So if, even it, though I have it, I don't have the right item equipped for this. So I just have to go change this. And wow, it works. Yeah, those are just different ways you can do the whole item event thing and keep the item. You could also have the item disappear after you use it. It's completely up to you. If you want it to disappear, it's just some of the code from the first one. Yeah, no big deal. But yeah, that's all I have for these little extra snippets for y'all. I hope this helped in showing you some more ideas and how things could work. But yeah, um, pardon me, goodness. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye!